Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue. I'm going to be bringing you guys another random pubcast. This will be random pubcast number four. Um, I finally posted all the videos that I did the other day. They're all on YouTube. I think I put the wrong date now that I look at it. But, I don't know, I was feeling a little bored. Um, I started doing homework. That didn't work out too well. So, I'm going to cast Dota instead. Because that's a great idea, right? Anyways, um, I just got into this game. This is loading up. Once again, this is a random pubcast, so I know nobody in this game. I will be trying to cast to the best of my abilities. And hopefully I actually load sometime soon so I can stop stalling with random facts. Um, as far as the homework that I am blowing off at the moment, it is just some Linux homework. I am a computer science, well, not computer science, network technology major. So I have to take classes that deal with computers. And Linux is one of those classes, and I don't feel like doing it, so. I'll be doing that later, though. I'll definitely be doing that right after all of this is all done. Which, I don't know what time that'll be done. But anyway, we're, we're into the game. The game is all loaded up, so I can stop stalling with random facts. Yes, I like that. <sighs> Alright, so set the free camera. Turn it on. Spectator chat is off. And everything is all set. Let me change my overlay. So you guys can actually see who's getting picked, or what's getting picked. And stop it, computer. There we go. All right, everything's good. Everything's fine. So this ought to be a fun match to watch. Uh, whenever I do random pubs, I usually just go straight to the front page. I have not set out any um, any plans on doing anybody else's random pubs, but I guess I'll go ahead and throw it out there. I mean, eventually I plan on like if if you want me to go cast your games, definitely shoot me a message or shoot me a comment on uh, face not Facebook. Shoot me a comment on YouTube. And I'll look for a game for you. And I'll cast it to the best of my abilities. Which is not really all that much. I mean, I'm still learning Dota. Even though I'm level 26. 26, I think. <clears throat> but there's still a lot of things to learn about Dota. So anyways, we got the game running up, rolling on up in here. We got people spawning. Prepare They're still picking. Battle. This is always fun when you play uh, pub matches and all pick. They, always, they usually try to wait until after the time starts. And then they pick their um, their hero. Hopefully we get a full team so I can introduce everybody. Because I want to introduce the whole team as a whole. And there we go. We got a pause. Please, one minute pause. Sure, why not? Hmm, let's see. What What? Uh, what can I assess from what's going on? Well, I'm going to assume Queen of Pain is mid. And Coddle and Sand King are going to be playing a support in a tri lane. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what it looks like it could be. Uh, as far as the Radiant side goes, we'll probably see that Storm Spirit go mid. And Rubik and Lion are going to be playing those supports. As far as uh, if they're going to be doing tri lanes on either side, like I said earlier, they might be doing tri lane on the Dire side because they have a Coddle and a Sand King. Coddle, Sand King plus somebody else. Oh, okay. Coddle, Sand King. Action no, us. Okay, they picked Alina. These lanes are going to be kind of funny. Nukes everywhere. That is very true. Sand King has a nuke. Lena has a nuke and Coddle, he is a nuke. When I said that wrong. Coddle has a nuke, Lena has a nuke, and Sand King is a nuke. His uh burrow strike, I think. Yes, it does 280, close enough for a nuke. Uh I consider nukes about 300 damage. Wow, really? Dragon Salve is only or Dragon Slave Salve? Slave? Dragon Slave. It's only 280. So we almost, we're missing one on both sides, so I'm going to go ahead and start introducing the dire side. Hopefully I'll pick up that last person by the time we get to the end of this. So on this same key, oh, okay, going to the radiant side. They got all five. Sorry, dire, radiant got it first. So on this disruptor, we got Rambo. On this life stealer, we got a Rob Law. I think this is Rob Law. And on line, we got uh, Futanari Nico. Uh... I'm not sure what that means. I don't think I want to know what that means. And on the Rubik, we got Slumberlust. And on Storm Spirit, we have Thirty seconds something to in Russian. I think. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's Russian, but I'm going to assume that's Russian because it has a little weird Q thing. Or O thing. Or symbol. Anyways, uh, that rounds off for the Radiant side. Going into the Dire side, we got Hindenburg. Hindenburg on that Sand King. G is for gangster. That truly is true. On that Lena. 
uh, at Cell Bravo. Please check them out on Twitter. The battle begins. Anytime I see an ad, I will promote them. So check out at Cell Bravo on Twitter if you like how he plays or he or she plays. Uh, Steva, Steva, yeah, Steva on the Phantom Lancer and Bat Beta Nap Beta Napast on Coddle. Okay. So there you go, got the introductions out, and then as far as the lane matchups are going, I think Rubik is going to be mid. Yes, Rubik's going to be mid versus this uh, Queen of Pain. It's, oh my god. Uh, Rubik did a lot of damage to that Queen of Pain with that double damage rune. I did not realize he did enough damage to do that much damage. Well, I mean, Queen of Pain doesn't really have all that much HP. She did go for the double mantle, which means that she is not going to have much survivability, really. Um, she doesn't really have all that strength stats. That was actually something I heard from uh, somebody. They said, um, don't ever go for, don't ever go for like straight mantle when you have at least three spots left in your inventory. Basically, because for one, the cost on one mantle is 150. For nine more gold, you can get three stats. <coughs> so you can get six extra stats for the same price. So this is a uh, relatively inefficient. But then again, these guys are high level, so they know what they're doing, and I don't. Anyway, I, got, I see Storm Spirit taking a lot of damage. He looks like he got hit by the Sand King stun and hit by the Lena stun, but he's able to make it out alive. He has his tangos and he will be fine for now. He has a salve coming to him on Crow, so he'll be able to regen that up. <coughs> but he is about to run out of regen. That's another thing to note. Uh, he's, he has one tango left and one clarity. As far as what's going on top lane, we got Disruptor Lion lane. It's <laughs> interesting lane. I'm, I'm trying to figure out who's going to be taking the farm. I'm assuming Lion's going to be taking the farm. I don't know. Either one of these guys can take the farm. Nine. But I think all they're really trying to do is just make sure Phantom Lancer doesn't have a fun time up here. Uh, Coddle's trying to do what he can to keep them shooed away, but Phantom Lancer cannot really come in to get a last hit. Because every time he does, Disruptor and Lion will both focus him down with auto attacks and they'll waste his regen. Speaking of regen, he does have six tank, or he did have six tangos and one salve, so he is prepared to stay in lane for the long haul. We got some, got some light harassment going on to the Coddle from Disruptor. Meanwhile, Life Steel is in the jungle. Ooh, I need to bring this up. Life Steel is Life Steel is in the jungle. He's just farming normal. I mean, what is what is it? Nine, nine last hits. So he killed that. He killed that. He killed this twice. I see Queen of Pain going low. Queen of Pain might go down to this Rubik. Uh, why did she run? Okay, she's ran this way so that way she can dodge stuff and she's trying to bottle up so she can get around. Or uh, she will be able to TP. Or she'll be she'll be able to blink in another four seconds. <laughs> And there she goes, he's pretty much almost fully healed up. I think Rubik might pay for that. Dyer's middle uh, no. tower is under attack. So many lives. Oh god, there goes Lifestyle. Lifestyle comes in full of support. Queen of Pain gets slowed and she goes down. Great, great um, rotation by Lifestyle from the jungle to help out to help out his ally. I think Lifestyle is actually we see Storm Spirit going very low. Oh my gosh. Almost missed a death on him, but he did not actually die. This lane is pr pretty tough for um, Storm Spirit also, because Storm Spirit doesn't have his escape ability until he reaches that level 6, so that he can have his ulti and he can be safe. But as soon as he's hit that level 6, I'm pretty sure he won't be getting that low anymore. Uh, he is out, officially out of region, he's running back to base with his boots, and Radiance bottom tower is under he has attack. his um, magic wand up also. So it seems all the action seems to be happening in his middle lane. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look at the ward <laughs> coverage, because that's always important to look at. Well, we have a little bit of downtime. Um, as far as the war coverage goes, we have... Uh, I can't draw on the map. Oh, I can do that. Yes. We have some wards down here for uh, Dyer. So Dyer pretty attack. much blocking. Ooh, wait. I see Lion going low. We got some engagement going on top. Kylo's about to get the last hit. No, he does not get the last hit. Oh, he does get the last hit. And Disruptor might actually go down too. If Disruptor turns around and go for a or attacks Vanillance a few more times, he might be able to get it. But no. The kill goes to Coddle, which is actually... I mean, it, it's making the best out of a bad situation. If the killer went to Phantom Lancer, he would have had more farm, but the sense of kill went to Coddle, then Coddle got the farm instead. But that's really, really irrelevant because, I mean, Phantom Lancer still gets gold for assist. And, yeah, he has two assists, so he still gets the gold for the assist, and he also gets the XP that these guys aren't getting. <laughs> from the kills, of course. I mean, where else would you get XP from? You don't get XP for free, do you? Well, I mean, unless you're playing Greeble, so let's not talk about Greeble. Oh god, I did not like Greeble. -uh. Anyways, Queen of Pain goes down mid to <laughs> Rubik. I'm not really sure. Okay, it looks like he telekinesis zapped and probably auto-attacked her a few times. She had a rune, but I'm not sure what rune it was. 
And Lion goes down top, Kato goes down top. Jeez, so much going on. Stop having stuff go on. So I would assume that they were going in on Kato and uh, Fenelento was able Fenelento was able to get a kill on the Lion before, um, after they killed Kato. So at least he was able to get something. He has Tranquil Boots on him so he'll be able to stay in lane just that much longer. He has some really good regen because of that and he also has some good movement speed just so long as his boots aren't broken. Now we have a, um, here we have an engagement going on. Um, Disruptor Disruptor has enough mana for his for his wall. He's trying to bait him in a little bit closer before he uses it but no, he is not able to make it out alive. Meanwhile, Life Still is still in the jungle. Just hanging out. Um, I'm assuming he's going for a Hand of Midas because he got that Glove of Haste first. He could potentially be going for a... Uh, Oh, hold on, hold on, so I'm engaging going down by it. We have, we have Storm Spear getting caught in two stuns and uh, one more auto attack, and he will go down to the Lena. Which is barely caught that one, too. So th this lane is pretty difficult for Storm Spear because like, all Sand Kings, all, all they have to do is have Sand King initiate with a stun and Lena immediately follow up. And it seems from how this lane is going for Storm Spear, we can check out his kills and deaths. That that has been happening every single time. So Storm Spear is having a lot of trouble down here. They might want to invest in a gank. Um, good thing for the Radiant side is Rubik is having fun in his main lane. He's doing really well. But other than that, the other two lanes are not doing as well as they probably would like for them to do. Uh, here we got Storm Spirit getting engaged upon again. Queen of Pain is coming down bot to go for a gank on Storm Spirit. He is not level 6 yet, but if he was, he would be able to get out much faster. He sees the Queen of Pain, he throws down the Static Remnant, he might throw an auto attack to get slow. Queen of Pain's, <laughs> Queen of Pain's ulti catches him at the very end of it, and Lena throws out the Dragon Slave and gets the kill. Uh, meanwhile, we got an engagement going top. Looks like they're trying to go for a Phantom Lancer. Phantom Lancer. They have vision of Phantom Lancer. I'm not sure how. I could not click on the fast enough, but Ryan goes down in the engagement. So they were able to get the Phantom Lancer at least. Oh, okay. There's a Sentry Ward placed by the Radiant. So they were able to see it. And Rubik stole something. Rubik stole Illuminate. Oh, gosh. Of all spells for him to steal. So Rubik steals Illuminate, so whenever he goes back to his mid lane, Queen of Pain will, have, will be having even more trouble against him. That's what I'm assuming at least. Anyway, since we got reaching that close to that 10 minute mark, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the items because something significant might be purchased. There we go, Arcane's Boots is up on Rubik. Uh, other than that, nothing too special. I think Disrupt is going for, or I'm pretty sure Disrupt is going for a Urn of Shadows. And really not too much of it. I mean, Tranquil Boots on Phantom Lancer. As far as Lights into Denies goes, because that's always fun to look at. Queen of Pain is out lane or is out farming Rubik, really. -uh. I honestly would have thought it would be the other way around. Let's check the levels. Uh, she's level seven, Rubik is level seven, so okay. There we go, Rubik's trying to eliminate. Queen of Pain's gonna get hit by no, she just barely just barely misses the edge of it. She blinks away. Meanwhile, we got Lion going low up top, looks like they had engagement online. And Disruptor also, but they backed up fast enough. Missing. So this sentry right here, I mean, even though it's a sentry in lane, they can't, the um, Radiant side can't really do much against the Phantom Lancer because between Phantom Lancer and, uh, between Phantom Lancer and Coddle, between Phantom Lancer and Coddle is not really much they can do to engage on the Phantom Lancer. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Basically, Phantom Lancer has infinite mana because of Coddle. So now Kato's going to be hit, getting hit by his own Illuminate, and he goes down to a zap. Now Rubik's going to be running away, he has a haste room, so he will be fast enough to get away from this. But there's a Queen of Pain cutting him off, and she's trying to slow him, but it doesn't matter. He is too fast, he cannot be slowed. Oh man, flashbacks. Flashbacks to League of Legends, I'm sorry I said that, but still flashbacks. And Queen of Pain trying to come around the side so she can try to get the kill on him, but no. No, she will not be able to. Sad days. Alright, so I'm going to wait for a little bit of downtime and then explain my comment earlier because you guys are probably raging that I said League of Legends and a Dota 2 cast. Hold on, hold on. Still some more action going on. We got Lena waiting for the life stealer to come around the corner. As soon as he comes around the corner, she's probably going to throw down a stun, throw down the everything else. Oh god, I don't know if she's what she wanted. She misses the stun. Life stealer could potentially turn around and get the kill on her, but he knows she has her ult and he's Middle trying to is missing. TFO. Meanwhile, we got engagement going down over... Meanwhile, we got engagement going down on the bottom Dyer's side of Radiant. Bottom tower is under attack. Uh, they were trying to go in the Sand King, but Sand King was able to throw down his Sandstorm and walk away safely. There was a dust wasted trying to get that, but Sand King just conveniently just walked away. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. 
I know whenever I play Sand King and I want to get away, I just turn Sandstorm on and stand still. Don't ever do that, it's a terrible idea. It's much more efficient just to turn, like, use Sandstorm to go in biz for that, those few seconds and then confuse everybody and then go away. Because <laughs> usually <clears throat> when you get to the higher levels like these guys are, Radiance they almost always carry dust. Attack. Not just because of the Sand King, but because of the Phantom Lancer also. Anyways, look how we had a... The aggression on bottom has pretty much stopped. Um, I guess one thing I can take a look at real quick is the war coverage. Because war coverage is important. As you can see on the mini map, there are... Uh, there we go. Wow, that was a terrible circle. Hold on. I can draw a better one. There's that one and that one. Looks like a smiley face. Anyway. Uh, there, there are two wards on the... There are two wards in the Radiant Jungle, Missing. so you can see where life is coming from. This is a very aggressive ward that they placed over here, that the Dyer has placed over here. Mainly, they're trying to they're trying to see who's coming into the lane to help protect the lane and where they're going if they're trying to escape. So it basically, helps them out. Um, dropping from the war covers, uh, we have Rubik. We ha he has a life steal inside of him. Life steal is trying to look for the he Phantom but they they engage on the wrong one, and life steal takes a crap load of damage from the Illuminate and whatever Please else I hit him. I don't remember missing. what it was, but he goes down regardless. He was level 6, so he he would have been able to use his ulti, but he he died too fast. And there we go, Ruby's getting engaged upon, he is just standing still, and now he goes down. So it's pretty much a bad, bad situation for the Radiant side. They tried, It, it could have worked out, but the TP response from the Dire side was on point, and they were able to get in there fast enough to shut down anything, any aggression they were trying to do. Storm Spirit now has enough money for his Arcane Boots, if that is what he is going for. And let's see if I was right. Come on, let me be right. Yes, he gets arcane boots. I'm obviously good because I predicted that, right? Nah, that's what Storm Spirit usually gets. That's kind of standard. Sand King also has arcane boots, so he's just going to sandstorm in this one spot, doing 40 damage per second that you're inside of it. It's pretty crazy. Anyway, we had Lion engaging on Queen of Pain. One more auto attack, and she would have been dead, but she was able to blink out fast enough. And now she's going to bottle up to heal up. And Lion is sad because one like. Just just one auto attack is all he needed to get that kill. Queen, meanwhile, Queen of Pain finds herself in the visible room. She walked down bottom. She was able to scout it out with this ward. Oh, ward placement. I'm going to go back to this because I keep trying to finish Missing my comments. Bottom. On it, I say it too slow. So anyway, this ward right... Whoa. This... Uh, whatever. Whatever. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Rubik's in a bad spot, but I don't think he knows it yet. Okay, Rubik's still suffering from Lena. He steals the Dragon, Salve, Dragon Slave from Lena. And now he's going to be trying to run away, and oh my god, he goes down handily to the lane altar. And now we got Lifestealer engaging on the uh, Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain is probably going to blink away. Oh, okay, Blink is on cooldown, she only has two levels in it. One more auto attack and she's gone, but no, they're not able to get there fast enough. And now Lena's in a lot of trouble. Lifestealer will be able to hand of Midas her soon. No, can't hand of Midas here. Radiance top tower is under yeah, there's attack. nothing really Lifestealer could do to catch up to her. His um, open wounds is on cooldown, but now it's off cooldown. He will be able to go in on this. He's probably going to be able to get the kill. She's going to try to throw the stun. She throws the stun, and Sand King comes in for the response, but they go away too fast, or he gets away just in time. Meanwhile, we got a, we had a disruptor get extremely low, probably to the Phantom Lancer and uh, Coddle her ass. But other than that, not much not much other action is going on yet. So, war coverage. This ward is a good spot. That's what I was trying to say. That's, that's, <laughs> I keep trying to go back to it to say it, but that ward is a good spot because it does three things. Uh, one, it spots the rune for the dire side. It spots who's coming uphill on the dire side, and also spots, well, also spots who's going up that little walkway uh, for the Radiance dire side. So it's a, it's a three-point war spot. Uh, another good war spot is also right around here, because this uh, pretty much tells you what's going on. Wait, it's pretty much tells you what's going on in the jungle. No matter what side you're on, you always want to know what's going on around those trees, and it also spots the rune if you place it right which people usually do I mean it's, it's pretty hard to place it wrong I mean unless you place it right there instead of right there Radiant but anyway other than that Dyer also have another ward Radiant up here there's an observer ward from the Radiant side on the high ground but Dyer's I don't think they have enough vision to attack. take that ward out Radiant's so it's a sad, sad, century ward, sad century ward meanwhile we got two towers from the Radiant side yeah. under attack we got Storm Spirit about to go in on the Queen of Pain but there's a life oh, okay life still is also trying to go on the Queen of Pain there goes Stone Spirit finds the Queen of Pain. He doesn't have a okay. He has enough mana for the pull. You're Queen of Pain did ulti, but she was not able to do anything. As a needy buyback, I like to call that the rage buyback. Queen of Pain is angry. She wants blood. She used her ulti, so she better get a kill. 
is what she's thinking. So she's looking for that Storm Spirit, but Storm Spirit will be able to get away. He's a little too mobile now that he's finally level 6. Speaking of which, let me take a look at this graph that I never Radiant's look at. Bottom that one. Tower has been denied. I'm not sure what I was going to accomplish by looking at this. But it's a graph that nobody ever used, so I felt sad for Radiant's it. Top I mean, look tower at it. It, it says a lot of information. Bottom. It says XP per minute, gold per minute. And nobody ever uses it. They always look at the, they always look at the items and the gold graphs and the XP. Radiant's top tower anyway, so I'm going to look at this graph so it feels nice. Or sorry, so it feels good about itself. Let's look at the levels, because this is convenient. There we go. The levels. Okay. Yeah. This, 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 this graph kind of sucks. Anyways. <laughs> going into engagement in mid. Well, we had engagement on <laughs> the Sand King Disruptor. Disruptor's trying to do what he could to save his, uh, his ally, but his ally still goes down to the ulti by Lena. And Sand King's able to get out of that. Uh, What's it called? Static Storm? He's able to get out of the Static Storm alive because mainly because he had the support there. Attack. Meanwhile, Radiant are sieging this bottom tower. They will be able to take this tower, but I think they will be losing mid tower as a result. How do you miss that? Uh, meanwhile, we got Phantom Lancer coming around the side. He's going to be scouting out for the Disruptor. He know Disruptor knows that's an illusion, or thinks it's an illusion. And now Disruptor is afraid. He can't do anything. He doesn't have blimps and he doesn't have survivability. So it was a very successful dive for the dire side. They were able to get the disruptor. But, I mean, this wasn't really much disruptor could do except for throw down, throw down his wall and hope they didn't walk in. And Rubik still stand, Rubik has same team's uh, has same team stun, but it doesn't matter. He still goes down. Lion is able to get the finger of death on the same team. The lion loses his life in the process. And here comes a life stealer. I don't know if life stealer wants to go through here, and he agrees with me, so he runs away. Why is he hobbling like he's hurt? Radiance middle oh, tower. Okay, never mind. It's just the way he walks. The anyway, now we got a storm spirit trying to engage on this Lena. They will be able to get the kill on Lena very fast. Uh, there's a phantom lancer around the corner. They're going to be trying to chase that soon. There's a coddle up the hill. I'm not sure what they know is. The rage runs out just in time for that to hit him. And life still goes inside of the storm spirit. Say, hey, storm spirit, you can move fast. You're my new car. Go this way. And they are both able to get away safely. Over here now. So now they're both just probably going to go to base and heal up. So Life Stealer is really uh I mean Phantom Lance is harder to kill than Life Stealer, but every time I face a Life Stealer and I'm well I mean I usually play supports, but I'm trying to like stun the Life Stealer or something and you know keep him keep him held down so we can kill him. He's always jumping into people and getting away from me and crap and then he explodes outside of him if it's one of my creeps and I die. <laughs> so annoying. Anyway, enough about me ranting. We got we got engaged coming on mid. We have Rubik going up, throwing out the telekinesis on top of the on top of the Queen of Pain. He's he's able to get the kill on the Queen of Pain. We had a Sand King coming with a stun, a beautiful stun at that. And he was trying to he was trying to channel his ulti, but they stepped the for them to fold too quickly. And he goes down. And now we got the Lena about to go down. There we go. Lena goes down to the telekinesis and also to the Life Stealer's auto attacks. And that was a very good engagement for the Radiant. And they're going to turn this into a tower. Meanwhile, Phantom Lancer's free farming. Oh, oh, items, items. Oh my god, he has a Diffusal Blade, Jesus. So Phantom Lancer has a Diffusal Blade about 20 minutes into the game. That's pretty impressive. I know I couldn't do that. Lifestealer is, in fact, building his armlet. And now we got Coddle's calling Life or Coddle's calling... Coddle is calling Phantom Lancer out of trouble because he knows that uh, people are going to be coming around the side. They see this Phantom attack. Lancer illusion. This is very well, very well played by Phantom Lancer. They see this illusion running this way, so they're assuming that Phantom is running around this way as well. But no, Phantom is actually mid, and there's a static storm thrown on top of the Phantom Lancer. Phantom is gonna go ahead and TP out, but no, he gets interrupted by the Rubik. Rubik with the telekinesis, and he almost goes down. Yes, he will go down. Oh my god, beautiful play. Beautiful, beautiful play by them, and there's a, there's a pull in by Storm Spirit, and, go, and there goes Sand King. What is the name of that move? Electric Vortex. There's the Vortex by Storm Spirit. And down goes Sand King. Uh, meanwhile, I think another tower was taken down in that engagement. No. Oh, this mid tower still alive. Tower Jeez. Is under attack. So, mid tower is still alive. I'm not really sure why it's still alive. But my Queen of Pain went on ahead to finish up her second null talisman. Items, items, items are important. So, as far as items, Life Stealer has Slotlet, and he also has Treads. So, that's another thing to note. Two main things that he wants. Uh, line, or not line, Disrupted does not have his urn, he opted to go for a Bracer, I agree with that choice. And here's Storm Spirit, they're about to go in on the lane, I think they'll, they will be able to get the kill on the lane. There we go, Lena's about to go down, and she goes down to another auto attack from Storm Spirit. 
It's a oh Kado trying to do what he can oh. to save her, but it's not enough. And all he can do is replenish her mana while she does. Dyer's top tower Sad days. Is under uh, meanwhile, we, we got a nice little dance going on between the Queen of Pain and the Rubik. I think Rubik, yes, Rubik, will go down to the screen. Really and there's life still looking bad. for the Queen of Pain. I don't think he'll be able to catch her. Even if he wanted to, she'll just blink away like that. And she is gone. She's out of here. Uh, but but here's life. Uh, here's the Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit able to get the Electric Vortex on her. Will life still be able to come in fast enough to help out with the kill, but no, oh my gosh, she runs into another, she runs into a lion, <laughs> she, she runs into a lion and gets ulti to death, oh man, so <laughs> she took one wrong turn and, she she took wrong, nah, one wrong turn and lost her life for it, meanwhile we got an army of Phantom Lancers pushing top lane and farming the jungle at the same time, because that's what Phantom Lancer does, and then engagement going on mid, Lena ulti the lion, say hey why'd you kill my queen of pain, and Lion goes down. Meanwhile, we have a, a beautiful static storm thrown out by the disruptor, but his team is not here to take advantage of that. So they just took, or the diary just took a lot of damage for. I mean, he just dealt out a lot of damage, yes, but nobody, they, they were not able to catch in on any of those kills. There's an urn thrown on top of Lena from. Radiance Middle Tower. Wait, did Lena? Okay, Lena built the urn. Never mind. Radiant structures. And they're gonna be, and Dyer gonna be siege in this middle tower. Um, I don't think there's much a Radiant can do just yet. Uh, they need more support. They have a Rubik coming in around the side, and they got a TP in coming in from the Storm Spirit, so they will probably be able to get this uh, Phantom Phantom Lancer. There we go, they got the Phantom Lancer. He was forced that forward, but it didn't matter. Uh, they still. <laughs> the, stat, the Vortex was still on him, and he's still alive. How is he still alive? I don't understand. He is surviving. I'm sorry, I need to see if he actually gets killed. Oh, wait, no, no, I need to watch this fight over here. So we got this fight over here, so there's a lot of stuff, people dying. Okay, now let's that. Let's go over here. So they're trying to find this Phantom Lancer. They will find the Phantom Lancer. There is the frog by Lion, and he will be throwing up the spike. There's a spike, and Life Steel gets it for the last hit. So I missed most of the action. I'm sorry about that, but anyway. Oh god, so much is going on. Why? Why is this team fight still going on? Lena is able to get a kill on that person. Stuff is still happening. Sand King is still alive. Life Steel is trying to run away. He's probably going to arm the toggle. There we go. Okay, he goes down. We got a TP coming in from. The from Disruptor, who died earlier in the team fight, but now he's back alive. Oh god, these guys are all over the place, man. And that was a lesson in focus. But anyway. So, Queen of Pain, uh, not Queen of Pain, the Dyer played their team fight out pretty well. They, um, they were able to spread the fight out, which is, I think, what they wanted. Because, I think... I want to say that most of the heroes are great versus the single uh, people who are singled out. While as the Radiant kind of need a lot of people clumped up, like Disruptor, he has a lot of crowd control for people who are clumped up. Crap, stop it. He has a lot of crowd control for people who are clumped up. Because a Static Storm does a lot of damage when people are all clumped up, and the Kinetic Field is really great when they're all clumped up, and so is the Thunder Strike, so they want people to be close by. Um, same thing with Storm Spirit, whenever he throws out the Overload, uh, it it works in the AOE, so he wants people to be close by. Lion, his stun works when everybody's close by. So I mean, long story short, Radiant really wants the team fight to be in one spot. They want the team fight to be all right here, as opposed to all right there. While as the Dire, on the other hand, they have a Phantom Lancer and a Coddle. I, I guess they kind of want people to be clumped up too, but they're more efficient at killing people spread out than the Radiant are. And there goes Eliminate to the face. Almost got stunned, but he dodges the stun from Nina. And items. Let's take a look at the items before we have this big team fight that's happening mid. Actually, this team fight might be happening soon. There's a Storm Spirit. Okay, Life Steel wins that Storm Spirit. It's a sign that they're probably about to go in. I think Storm Spirit will probably be able to. He's probably going to go for the Cuddle. He goes for the Cuddle. And Life Steel jumps out with the nuke. And he instantly, instantly hits his Q. They're trying to go for the Lena, but no, Lena moves away a little too fast. Meanwhile, the top tower is getting pushed. Um, I think they're, they're going to need somebody to respond to this soon. Never mind. Like, okay, there we go. Phantom, you should keep pushing. Phantom, you keep pushing. Why are you not still pushing? Okay, Phantom, you still pushing. Good. All right, so Phantom is going to probably take down the top tower before the Radiant are able to get this middle tower. Oh, there we go. We've got a TP in for Phantom Lancer. He's coming in to defend. He doesn't want to lose his tier three mid tower. It is. Not their last TP, but it is their TP. And there goes the dust thrown out by Lion. I'm not really sure why, but it was very well. It was, I mean, it helped the Queen of Pain. I guess they were expecting a 
They were expecting a Fandalin to be coming around the corner. Meanwhile, Fandalin has a Reaver. So let me take a look at the rest of these items. I'll have a little bit of downtime. Items, big items that I can see. Uh, there's an Orchid. I saw Orchids on Queen of Pain. Or Queen of Pain has an Orchid? Yes. And more team fight. So we got them chasing a Lena. They're trying to go into Lena, but this they run away a little too efficiently. Uh, Sand King is here. I heard him. I don't know where he is. I lied. Never mind. He's in the jungle. Just, just farm a few trees casually. And we got the Lion going down to the Lena. Dragon Slave. <laughs> Rubik stole the screen from Queen of Pain. And this team fight, or the, um, the Radiant are in full retreat. They do not like what's happening right now. Rubik might actually go down. Rubik will go down to the Lena. And there goes Lifestealer trying to do what he can. He's going to armlet toggle so he can bait a little bit. But nope, nothing. And there goes Lifestealer's out of mana. We got another team fight happening on the side. Lena goes down to the Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit is trying to get out while he can. He doesn't have mana. There we go. He has mana now, but he gets stunned up before he's able to activate his ulti one more time. And he goes down to the Phantom Hunter. Very long, drawn out team fight, man. I think the longer these team fights are drawn out, the Radiant's less effect. Like honestly, I think the longer these team fights are drawn out, the less effect of dire are technically the less effect of dire should be. But then again, if you, if you look at the radiant side, uh, they have between the disrupt and the lion, they pretty much you know one shot people. They have a nuke and they have a long cooldown, well, a relatively long cooldown on a long drawn out fight. And also storm spirit, his mana is he only has but so much mana. Well, if you look at the Dire side, the Dire side, they have Sand King who can throw a stun out. That's a relatively long cooldown, I guess. 11 seconds, that's long enough. Uh, you have the Queen of Pain who can spam her spells consistently. You have Kado who can give everybody free mana. And you also have the Phantom Hunter who just does auto attacks. So I think the longer the fights are drawn out, the better they are Dyer's for... Top tower is under attack. The better they should be for... Hold on, the better they are for the Dire side. Jeez, I lost my point. What I'm trying to say is, the longer the fight goes, the higher is more likely to win. That's what I'm trying to say. It kind of came out that way, right? Yeah, we got a Storm Spirit about to go into Queen of Pain. He has an Orchids of his own. He he, <laughs> he silences Queen of Pain, and then Queen of Pain silences him. I think he will die in this engagement, though. Speak. There we go. He goes down to the Orr. Orchids burn, and Queen of Pain I'm showing, sorry. Did you showing Storm Spirit that she's the better auto attacker. I think if uh, Storm Spirit were able to, or would have hit his electric vortex a little bit faster, he might have been able to get the kill on that before he went down, but nope, that was not the case. Uh, meanwhile, we got a Ghost Scepter on Lina. Ghost Scepter coming to Lina from the Crow. And still the siege continues mid. Meanwhile, Fanalanche is taking down this top tower. I think he will be able to get this tower. Uh, there we go, his invis was used to get a, um, to get an extra person attacking it. Now Life Stealer comes in. Life Stealer is gonna probably try to deny this. He should go deny this before the siege. There we go, he denies it. Radiance top tower is denied, so a good thing denied. for the Radiant side. But still, that's a tower lost. Meanwhile, Phantom Lancer has a heart. Jesus, he's been farming like a madman. Let's uh, take a look at the last hits and denies. Yes, he's been farming like a madman indeed. 148 last hits compared to Life Stealer. Who's the only one to really compare to him? Radiant's is 113. Is under attack. So Phantom Lancer has been getting everything that he wants. And if we look at the kills and deaths, as what? Well, wait, did I hear Mel Melstorm? Yep, we got a Melstorm on Lifestealer. But looking at the kills and deaths, uh, Lifestealer and you no, know, Lifestealer has been involved in more. Even though he's died more, he's been involved in more. Meanwhile, we got an engagement coming over here. Go ahead. We got an engagement coming over here. Lena four steps away over the hill attack. and through the woods. Whatever the rest of the song. I heard a Queen of Pain scream. Queen of Pain scream went down. I'm sorry I missed that. Life still is trying to go in on the, on the Queen of Pain. I don't think it's a good idea. He's going to probably going to do his, throw his rage out so he can get away from this. There we go. He throws his rage. The drum charge will pop. They're going to go in on this rough here. Life still, they're still trying to run away. Life still goes down to the same King who has a blink dagger and Sand King will be going down to the Life Stealer but it doesn't matter, the rest of the team is here, Life Stealer is in trouble and he dies to all the auto attacks and there goes the bottom tower. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Things are swinging heavily in favor of the Dire as you can obviously see mainly because all these long drawn out team fights are working out in their favor like I explained earlier. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. My there was a little bit of lag, there's Storm Spirit, true, he cannot run away, Queen of Pain is all of his own. And he goes down. That was essentially a team wipe. By the Dire. So they will be able to claim this tower. There's only a lone Rubik. All he can do is steal a spell and hope it's a good one. Oh god. More lag. There we go. There goes the bottom wax. Um, on the radiant side. 
Um, at this point, I don't think there's much they can do. I mean, Dyer can honestly just fountain farm if they really wanted to and still win the game. Uh, they, <laughs> Raiden have a really trying hard to siege this middle tower. As you can see, the, siege, the middle tower is not even deniable yet. But they've been trying so hard to get that middle tower so they can get something working their way. I think if they were able to get that middle tower, they might have probably rotated to top and actually took that tower before their tier 2 got taken. But even still, I mean... <laughs> even still, that probably wouldn't change much of anything. Does Rubik have a hand of Midas or is that Lion? Wait, oh, Life Stealer. Okay, that was Life Stealer's hand of Midas. Let me take a look at the items before we have another engagement Radiant's coming out of mid. Um, BKB. BKB up on Queen of Pan is going to play Factor, Force Staff on Kato, and Diffusal Blade level 1 on Phantom Lancer. He also has a heart. Anyway, Life still tried to throw uh, open wounds on the Kato, and he will actually lose his life for trying. No, he will not lose his life yet. There it goes. The Storm Spear coming in for the support, and there's a Lion throw up. Stun Lion is able to get the kill on the Kato, and there. Whoa, whoa, where, where did Life still go? Life Stealer went inside of Storm Spirit so that he can get away. And oh my god, Storm Spirit takes all of that damage. And there's Life Stealer coming out. He's trying to do what he can to save his team, but I think it's a little bit too late. He's gonna go and engage on Lena. Lena's Ghost Scepter in the way, so she can make it out alive. Rubik four staffs over the hill, and Lena four staffs over the hill too. She throws on the ultra still to get the kill. She might lose her life in this game, but no, she will not. Life Stealer gets stunned up by the by the Saiyan King. Very well played by him. He channeled his ulti and then he came in with the stun and able to get the kill on that. Another, yet another team wipe for the Dyer. Wait, that's kind of confusing. So, if I say a team wipe for the Dyer, um, does that mean the Dyer got the team wipe or the Dyer got wiped? I really don't know. And we got GG's being thrown out by the Life Stealer. So this game is pretty much over, Radiant's really. I mean, there's, there's a Phantom Lancer with a Diffusal Heart, and it's only 30 minutes into the game, so... Usually when I play Phantom Lancer, it takes me about an hour to get a Diffuser Blade, and then another hour to get a heart. But like I said, it's probably because I'm just bad at playing Dota. Or sorry, I'm just bad at farming. Not bad at playing Dota, just bad at farming. But Coddle calling back the Lena, and there we go. Yes, Coddle, Phantom Lancer is a dangerous lane because Phantom Lancer can invest his points in what he wants. He can put one point in Doppelwalk, and then use it whenever he wants, and then he can just throw out Radiant's infinite nukes. He can throw attack. his Q as many times as once. His Q costs, what is it, 125, or sorry, 140 at max level. Cuddle gives you how much mana? Oh god. Cuddle gives you 300 mana at max level. So he can throw out as many Qs as he wants. Anyway, we got an engagement going on mid. Uh, Lion was trying to do it. He threw out the stun. He caught a few people. He's able to get the kill on the Sand King, but it doesn't matter. He goes down. He loses his life in exchange. Life still trying to do what he can against this. But there's too much damage from the Queen of Pain and from the Phantom Lancer. This Queen of Pain, she just... Whoa, that's turn of screen. Queen of Pain did go down, but they were able to... Did go down, but she buys back immediately. And there goes Phantom Lancer. All his mana is gone. He just wishes Coddle was here, but no, he doesn't. He's gonna go on the Phantom Lancer. He's gonna go on the Lion. Gets the kill on the Lion with just auto-attacks. And it's AoE and more AoE. <laughs> I've stayed up my life still. And there goes the Orcus throwing on the Phantom Lancer. And Phantom is still doing a lot of damage to the Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit is trying to do what he can against them. He throws up, he throws up there. That, and Kato comes in just in time to save his life. He throws out the Force Staff on him. He throws down the mech so he can make it out alive. And he gets out of there. And there's the... There's Rubik going down. He will be going down regardless. That and oh my gosh. Perfect. So much... So many, so many clutch plays Radiant's by the Dyer, really. And Queen of Pain has a Mask of Madness. Wow, okay. That, that's, oh, there you go, Queen of Pain's going on the, oh Queen of Pain just went in on the, on the Disruptor. She gets killed on the Disruptor. Storm Spirit trying to do what he can to, I don't know, stop Radiant's Queen of Pain, but it's too late. His attack. partner's already dead. And the tower's getting sieged, and this will be the last tower, and now they're going to siege Radiant's the Ancient, or they're going to farm. They're gonna find the fountain, whichever one happens first. Life still is stealing a lot of HP from the Phantom Lancer. And there goes this, this screaming pain by the Queen of Pain. Onto the Storm Spirit, and Life still is trying to run away, but the loser is doing too much damage. He's, he got purged, and <laughs> Disruptor, no, not Disruptor. Phantom can pretty much stay in here since the fountain is focusing the loser instead of him. And oh my god, he gets a triple kill. Will he be able to get a rampage? This is the question. I do not think he'd be able to get a rampage. The fountain, uh, the throne will die too fast, and that is the end of the game. All right, guys, that was a random pubcast number four. A lot of action happening in there. Very glad I caught most of it, not all of it. But anyway, um, 
Once again, my name is Cool Blue. I just casted a random pub. Uh, please let me know what you think of my cast in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you, want, you guys want me to do more, more of other stuff. I guess. I mean, I haven't really thought through everything, but random pubs this is going to be a standard. Let me know if you want me to cast your games. I'll definitely be glad to try to cast those whenever I have the spare time. And that is it. So.